Hello, uh, my name is Tom Walski. I'm with the Water Distribution System Analysis Committee from EWRI, and we're compiling a history of water distribution system analysis. Today I'm in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. It's October 12th, uh, 2015, and I'm with Steve Lowry, a consulting engineer who has uh, been doing water distribution system analysis for a long time now, and uh, we want to get his side of the business and how He's seen the history of water distribution system analysis evolve over time and you know what his observations are. Uh, so now we're going to start the first question and that is, uh, Steve, tell us how you really got into water distribution system analysis to begin with. Okay, well how did I get into uh, water distribution modeling? Well the answer is, I, this may be a fairly common answer, it may be, uh, maybe an unusual answer, but it basically just kind of fell into it. Um, to give you a little background, uh, I was in college in the 1970s. Uh, at that time, we didn't have personal computers. Calculators, as a matter of fact, were just beginning to come out. You know, we had the wars between the uh, Texas Instruments and Hewlett Packard calculators. Uh, we did have a mainframe, of course, at the university, and uh, we did punch card type programming, that kind of thing. Um, and in some of our engineering courses, uh, that was a, a big part of the courses, was to do work with uh, the computer application and, and try and do some uh, engineering work associated with computers. Uh, and one of the things that we did, of course, was a Hardy Cross procedure in some of my water resources classes. And first we did them by hand, and it wasn't a very big network that we were working on, but as you can imagine, the, uh, the time required to do these things by hand was quite a bit. Uh, and then we did it with a computer. And uh, that was one of the first times I probably thought, uh, boy, these computers really can uh, help you out and make things faster. Uh, and then at the first couple of jobs I had as a, as a consultant after I graduated from college, uh, we had a little, I had a little more computer exposure than probably most people did. Uh, and then in 1985, I moved to Pennsylvania and I started with a large uh, consulting firm. And in the entire water resources department, I was about the only engineer with much in the way of computer skills. Uh, and of course, they had a mainframe, did a little work with that. But back in the corner of the office, kind of in the closet, was a, an IBM XT computer. It had a 10 megabyte hard drive. It was uh, a huge computer for the time. And my first experience with a computer other than a mainframe, really, or a mini type computer. Um, and on that computer they had a, a software package uh, from the University of Kentucky called KY Pipes, which allowed you to do hydraulic analysis work. And uh, it was all manual input data. You had to put everything in, in tables and text editors. And then you'd get your results. It was also a, a, just a printout of t columns of uh, numbers and uh, that kind of thing. And you'd have to figure out your hydraulic analysis from there. I can still remember doing a 600 pipe model, take about 45 minutes for a run. So you'd go to lunch uh, and then you'd come back uh, and look at your results when you got back and hope you didn't make a mistake in your input data. Um, but again, so really the way I got into it was I was the one unusual person in the group that, ha that knew anything about computers, so they put me back in the corner with the IBM XT and, and let me have at it. Okay, so since then, though, you've branched out and become a consultant on your own with a one-man company. You've worked on a lot of systems. About how many studies have you done? Well, you know, I've never really counted. I would say it's got to be at least 100. You know, and a lot of those are pretty small systems, but, and mostly in the United States. Um, I've done a couple models in Puerto Rico, uh, and then the rest of them have been across the United States, but I've worked in, I'm sure, more than a dozen states doing hydraulic work. Okay, so you've seen the whole range from large systems down to, to tiny systems then, really? Yeah, I've, I've worked on some, some mega systems where the, the, I mean, in terms of the customer demands, we're up in the 350 MGD range, down to small systems with uh, less than one MGD range. Yeah. So do you have any especially interesting uh, studies that you've worked on? Well, over the years, there's been quite a few interesting ones, uh, and for different reasons. I uh, did a job in Long Island, uh, New York, um, several years ago. The interesting thing about this model was the way in which they operated the system and then the way I, I had to calibrate the model in order to get it to work out. Uh, it was a system with no floating storage. They had a series of wells distributed throughout the system and then a couple of pump storage facilities. But 
they operated the system based on pressure. So as pressures dropped, they would they would increase the number of wells that were running. And my calibration technique had to had to take that into account. Um, and so it was a it was an interesting job from that viewpoint in terms of the the unusual kind of calibration work that was required. Another job I had that was was interesting was probably a in that, that same time frame was a job I did up in the Scranton and Wilkes-Barre area in Pennsylvania. Uh, it was a big system that they were combining multiple systems that had developed over the years. Um, a lot of unusual mapping and piping arrangements and things like that. And I also met this uh, interesting fellow there that was in charge of the, the water systems up there. His name was Tom Walski. And we became friends and uh, have been now for 25 years or so. Uh, but the, just the the procedures and the mapping and the extra work that was required in order to figure out how the distribution systems were actually actually connected up up there made that a, a really unusual and interesting job. Another one, uh, in the Buffalo area in New York, this was back in the mid-1990s, uh, we did some work in the uh, it was Erie County Water Authority um, that was in the suburbs surrounding the, the city of Buffalo. This was also in the middle of Buffalo's Super Bowl runs. And one of the things we were we looked at up there was what would happen if they had what they called the Super Bowl flush. They were worried about if everyone got up at halftime and, and used the restroom at the same time, was that going to cause a uh, you know major downsurge in pressure in their system? So we actually analyzed the Super Bowl flush to see if there were going to be, be a, a lot of trouble from that. A couple other things that maybe don't necessarily have to do with hydraulic modeling. They built a 10 million gallon tank and they put the kickers from the Buffalo Bill and Bills inside the tank before they filled it with water. <laughs> and they had them punt and do some place kicks to see if they could get the ball all the way across the tank. So, so that was a fairly interesting job there. And then a, one more job that, that I've found interesting is I currently do work for the city of Bethlehem. But what makes that job interesting is it was one of the first models I ever put together back in the 1980s. And every five years or so, they've hired me to update and calibrate the model. And so it's grown from a you know, three or 400 pipe model up to a six or 7,000 pipe model now over the years. And uh, I've just been involved in a lot of different analyses and processes with them. So it's been interesting to see how that model has grown and how the city has grown you know, over, the, over that period of time. So that's Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, right? That's Beth yeah, that Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we well, have done all of these reports and studies, so you've done well over 100 studies yet. You really haven't published much in the peer review literature. Uh, that's not attractive to you, or what's, what's your feelings about that? Well, it's a combination of things. I guess, guess uh, the primary uh, reason for that has been the size of clients that I'm usually wind up dealing with. Um, I did mention a couple of the bigger jobs, you know, 350 MGD systems. That's an unusual system for me. Most of my clients are much smaller, um, and I, and so there's not a lot of uh, room there to to do a a study of you know an extra special study. It's a pretty nuts and bolts kind of uh, modeling for those folks. Uh, the other reason is just time. Um, I've always been busy. It's it's a little hard to explain to a client that you're not meeting his deadline because you're writing a paper for a you know, for an AWWA presentation or something, so I've had to I've had to limit myself there just to uh, just to meet, you know meet all my clients' requirements and meet my deadlines. Well, do you follow journals much on water distribution system, or do you just basically use what's available? Well, it's a combination. I mean, I do review the journals, and I'd like to review the innovations and the the new techniques that are coming out. And the problem there would be. What kind of what you know the clients and what are they what kind of things are they looking for? I mean, if you're getting a, a small system and they just want to know you know do they need to replace a pipe or replace a pump or install a new tank, you know they're not they don't need you to do a uh, you know some kind of really involved water quality work or something like that in order to determine those things. So uh, some of it's been because of the size of the clients. Although I do like to keep up with the the latest in the you know in the modeling uh, techniques. And a lot of that is actually, maybe to me, has come a little, uh, a little later, you know, but things like GIS, generation of models, you know, those kinds of things, the larger systems may have been doing that for a decade or so, and a lot of that's being done now at the, the smaller system level as well. Okay. In addition to doing modeling, you do a lot of work with SCADA systems, designing them and uh, 
And what do you see about the integration of modeling and SCADA into operations? Is there a trend coming in that, or are you doing it now? Well, there's there's some there. What's you know, it's, it's unusual. I, I do work in both areas, both SCADA and modeling, and it, there hasn't been a whole lot of overlap in the two. I either do SCADA work for a client or I do model work for a client, um, and there's not always uh, you know a combination. And I think one of the things is that you you're that's happening in the area is that you've got, unless it's a very big system, you know, you've got your SCADA people in operations, you've got your modeling people in the engineering department, and there may be some friction between the two or just not a lot of interaction between the two in all cases. So you've got people protecting their territory. Um, and as a result, you need to overcome that, that uh, diversity between the, the operations people versus the engineering department in order to get the integration of the two. I do think there's a lot of, of uh, potential there. Um, you know, operations people are very good with running the system, understanding the system, how it works based on their past experiences with the system. And so if they come into a situation and it's something that they dealt with before, they're very good at handling that. Uh, the concerns or the problems that they have is when something new comes along. And that's where your model could really help because you could do some SCADA model interactions and show them what to expect under this new condition or this new situation that they haven't dealt with before. The problem there is getting convincing them that they need to con concern themselves about some of these new situations. You know, something that hasn't happened before, they're not necessarily uh, thinking it's going to happen. So, you know, they may be a little resistant to, to doing those kinds of things. But that to me is the, is the biggest roadblock to the SCADA model integration is just getting those departments to agree that there are some benefits to both and, and getting some interaction there. Right, it's more of a, a people issue as opposed to a technology issue then, really. Yeah, the, I mean, the interface between the two is there. It, uh, you know, it functions very well. And the, you know, someone who sees both sides uh, can see that there is quite a few benefits. I mean, the ability to project out and understand if you've got an emergency situation or some kind of other shutdown that you need to go through that they haven't done before, then your your uh, SCADA model, uh, you know, integration is, is very important, but that, that's where we're at, I would say. Okay. Well, since you've been doing this now for decades, this kind of work, do you have any overall observations about the history of distribution system analysis and how that has, is going to go into the future? So we, we're watching this 10 years from now, see how well you predicted what's going to be happening. Well, the way I, I mean, the, the, the history of, the, of modeling has been, you know, we started off with just the, the basic graphic type interface, or not graphic type, but text-based, you know, interface models where you had tables of information, a map drawn by your CAD technician or by your, your you know, just general drafting technician, and you're focusing on flows and pressures in the system. It was a very much a, a limited to hydraulic analysis. A lot of the development went into, at that point in time, you know, decade ago or so or more, went into improving that preparation of the model and, and improving the graphic capabilities of the model. So you, you know, you work, you had your graphical user interfaces, those kinds of things. Still mainly though the models were focused on flows and pressures. Um, and then as, you know, as times evolved from that, we've got to the point where now that the development of the model from a graphic basis is, is coming along very nicely, the next step is what else can we do with analyses? And so flows and pressures are still important, but the other things that I see are coming and a lot of my clients, even smaller clients are inquiring about now are things like, what can we do about water quality? You know, EPA is potentially going to have some new regulations on distribution system uh, chlorine residuals. So there's water quality work to do there. Uh, some other areas would be in terms of condition-based assessments. You know, utilities used to just, you know, build new pipelines because road work was going to be done in the area but now they're looking at other things you know what condition is the pipe actually in you know how many customers am i serving from this you know through this main how many people would benefit from this improvement and they're doing much more of a uh trying to spend their dollars uh wisely and so modeling would really help there and a third area is in the in the 
the other, again, this is also kind of a uh, money issue, is what can we do to reduce water losses? You know, what can we, you know, what kind of water audit can we perform? Um, what other kinds of things can we do to, to find out where we're losing water in our system and, there, and uh, you know, reduce that amount and maybe we can save some other system improvements, you know, a construction project or two, and save quite a bit of money. And I think what's going to drive that is improvements in things like metering. You know, we've got new innovations and new things in customer metering, you know, where we can, you know, get all the readings hourly basis, you know, based on some kind of a automated meter reading program. Also meters that you can measure system flows. So if you can insert meters into your system, some kind of electronic uh, meter and track where the water's going, I think that's going to be a, a big, big benefit there. So I think that's where, kind of where we're going with water modeling, um, and, but we'll, we'll see. Like you said, 10 years from now, we'll see if I'm right or wrong. Okay, great, Steve. Thanks a lot for uh, agreeing to participate in our uh, committee's uh, work, and we look forward to wishing you the best of luck in all your future work as well. Well, thanks, Tom. Appreciate it.